Um, I'm Gail Hodges, the president of the Preservation Foundation, and I'm pleased to welcome you to what I think is our 38th annual meeting, uh, which seems like a long time. We will um, begin with the secretary's report. Kristen Chun uh, will tell us if we have the proxies in corner. In that case, I will look for an, a motion to approve the minutes of the 2013 annual meeting. Is there a motion? Okay. And a second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We have had a busy and very successful year marked with many special projects for the Preservation Foundation. Our success is due in large measure to the support of you, our members, and other interested community residents and, com and community organizations. Just to mention a few things, um, in partnership with the City of Lake Forest, we secured an additional $1.236 million ITEP grant to support the renovation of the downtown historic railroad station. Uh, you'll witness uh, work beginning there again later this spring. Friends and neighbors across the region joined with generous homeowners to make our October Historic Home and Garden Tour a resounding success. The Foundation and the North and South King neighbors, in partnership with the city, completed restoration of the Deer Path Hill Estate gates at both the King Muir Deer Path and the Castlegate Waukegan Road entrances. You'll hear more about those later today. We launched a beautiful new website. Please be sure to visit www.lfpf.org for our latest news. Generous foundation members and residents across the community ensured the success of our second year-end annual fund campaign, raising over $20,000 that we can put towards supporting Lake Forest's future by preserving its past through preservation projects. Last year, 10 homeowners received preservation awards recognizing the dedication, stewardship, and diligence required to help preserve the architectural gems that make our community unique. And finally, our wonderful annual holiday celebration for members provided a first ever look at the Frank Hibbard Estate House, a 2006 National Register of Historic Place, Places award winner, thanks to generous hosts and homeowners, Kent and Suzanne Wallison. Lake Forest is unique in our nation and our mission is to help keep it that way. Each step forward in preservation helps secure the future of the special qualities we all love about Lake Forest and helps curtail the bit by bit erosion of incompatible change. On the city's agenda, as I'm sure you are aware, are two development proposals for special use approvals, each of which has significant relevance to historic preservation. The Route 60 neighborhood shopping center proposal, commonly called the Whole Foods development, is one. As you likely are aware, the Foundations Board has distributed a white paper to the community, the City Council, and boards and commissions relating to this proposal. This is simply to get the facts out before the community. The paper is posted on our website and includes three critical points, among others. First, the question is not Whole Foods or no Whole Foods. Whole Foods is simply the proposed anchor tenant in the proposal. Key considerations relate to whether the city will uphold the conditions of the comprehensive plan for the Route 60 corridor, which envision a 150-foot setback for all development, preservation of the natural landscape, and preservation and adaptive reuse of the historic mansion on the property. And finally, this property, part of a transition district, is governed by also by the zoning code, which defines it as a transitional area and specifies conditions relating directly back to the comprehensive plan for that par parcel. The Plan Commission will hold a special meeting for reconsideration of this proposal on Monday, May 12th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. We have no information at present about consideration of this proposal by either the Historic Preservation Commission or the Building Review Board, nor are plans available at this time. If you are interested, I would encourage you to follow the city's release of materials. There also is the matter of the Dunkin' Donuts proposal for the downtown Lake Forest Station. This proposal also will come before the Plan Commission for special use consideration and also to the Historic Preservation Commission. The Foundation has offered opinions on aesthetics and safety issues with regard to the most recent airing of this proposal. 
At this time, there are no dates announced for further consideration of this proposal and no plan revisions are currently public, publicly advisable. If you were following this petition, I uh, advise you to keep checking with the city's website and local PR. May 2014 is coming up. It's National Preservation Month. The foundation has submitted to the city the proclamation for citywide observance of Preservation Month. The proclamation highlights the various actions the city has taken that have made it a leader in historic preservation initiatives on the North Shore and in the Chicago region. It's something we should be very proud of. The proclamation will be read by the mayor at the city council's Monday, May 5th meeting, is our understanding. Finally, I would like to recognize the significant contributions of three board members whose terms expire this month. Suzanne Boren and Pauline Moore are here. The third person is Rosemary Troxell, and I wonder if Pauline and Suzanne would come forward for a minute. Suzanne, our immediate past president, moved the foundation forward in numerous productive ways, particularly in bringing more marketing attention to the significance of our work and to helping to ensure the longevity of Lake Forest's historic visual character. Pauline, a past president of the foundation, has for several decades provided support, insight, productive direction, and thoughtful, constructive advice to help us maximize our mission and engage the community in supporting that mission. In addition to recognizing Pauline's recent service, we are pleased to tell you that we are honoring her as the, to become an honorary director of the foundation, which is a permanent Thank position. Thank you. <laughs> and for each of you, we would like you to enjoy these wonderful hydrangeas. Rosemary Troxo could not be here today, but since joining our board three years ago, she has magnified the foundation's presence in the community through carefully targeted public relations and engagement of the community's media representatives in publicizing our actions and the beauty of the historic settings that form the background for many of our programs and tours. We also will thank her with one of these beautiful plants. We will miss these three people, but hope they will come back and give us some help from time to time. I'd like to further uh, thank all of you for your support as we move forward with our mission to protect the historic visual character of Lake Forest and our vision of a community sharing a commitment to preserving that unique character. Fred Moyer uh, will now give our treasurer's report um, in the absence of, Doug, of Dennis Johnston. Thanks. Thank you, Gail. Um, I had the opportunity to visit with Dennis Johnson, our outgoing treasurer, last Wednesday. Uh, his advice to me was keep it brief. And I will submit to you as uh, someone who has just arrived to this position today, I am uniquely qualified to keep it brief. Uh, already, however, I have been greatly assisted by Marcy Kerr, who has, does, does such great work for the foundation in every area. Uh, and I asked Marcy if she would uh, provide me with some of the highlights that uh, accompany the material that's on page three, third part of your material there. We are not going to go through every uh, uh, column and, uh, and bottom line, except to observe that the bottom line is good. If you look at the bottom line of the whole page, it's improved over last year. <clears throat> and um, there are certain factors that account for that. Uh, overall, there's a 13.5% increase in income, and this is attributed to a strong membership drive, uh, continued success of the second annual fund drive, a generous donor, increased in well-attended programs. Uh, on the expense side, they have been kept in uh, control, uh, under control, and the, uh, the increases that there have been have been uh, partially in awards, as there has been the need to reorder uh, plaques to go with the increased number of awards. Uh, this and the, but these will last approximately five years. Uh, projects uh, uh, included restoring the uh, Castlegate gates and a new website being set up. And for the first time in five years, we've had a surplus at the end of the year, and it will be used to supplement ongoing projects. And that will conclude the brief report. Thank you.
Maureen Grinnell come forward for um, the development report? Thank you, Gail. The successes that we've enjoyed last year and the continuation of previous successes would not be possible without all of you in the room. Uh, the Vice President of Development role is kind of an interesting one. Uh, we gather uh, membership and hope to keep your interest. We also gain support through the annual fund. We've had two of them now, both of them very successful. And we also, I think, have a pulse, or we try to have a pulse, on what keeps you engaged and involved in this organization. I think if I were to ask most of you, why do you support this organization, many of you would say because it's the right thing to do. And my appeal to you today would be to think a little bit more into the future, into it's the most important or a very important thing to continue to do. Uh, there are, just with age, certainly, of landmarks around town, they're showing their age. And of course, one of our goals is to find ways to help find funding to restore and preserve them. We also have, uh, I think you, you said it very well, Gail, when you, when you worded it as uh, incompatible or incompatible uh, design changes that oftentimes are brought up as ideas or suggestions for moving the community forward that possibly need a little bit more revisiting. I think one of our strongest threats currently is the need for our community to continue to raise revenues. Uh, given some of the tax shortfalls that we've, that we've been experiencing. This isn't a discussion about taxes, but what it is, I think, a, an important consideration is, are we possibly paying Peter or robbing Peter to pay Paul with some of our more aggressive development efforts? I think that's one of the things we need to watch more than anything else. The two instances that Gail identified are serious and they're rooted in desire for increased revenue for the community. We've worked well with the city and partnerships across the board, particularly the King Muir Gates, both of those, and I think our reputation and uh, relationship with the city is strong. But as a community, if you truly care about this, we need the two things that you provided. Number one, you're here, thank you so much. And secondly, your funding through membership and also the annual fund. So we couldn't be prouder. It's a Blackhawks playoff day. I saw a car in the parking lot with the Blackhawks license plate. So good for you for being here. I really appreciate it. And we hope that we can continue and count on your support uh, this year and in the future years because I think as a community, we need it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Gail. Uh, we always attempt to meet educational objectives when we have our programs. And uh, this year, we felt we did um, a great job in terms of doing that. We kicked it off at the annu after the annual meeting by going to the Pike House, which is an Adler house, and, and uh, um, toured that. We uh, had our first wine stroll of the year, which we are now calling Garden Stroll after, uh, for this year. But uh, we went to the Tuttle House, and that actually the Tuttle House is one of the award winners this year. So um, that, was on, uh, that was early in, in June. If you wanted Georgian homes, we had them. Uh, we had a great Georgian house tour, um, and um, it was uh, successful. And that's really our only big fundraiser for the year. So. Um, we appreciated that. Mar uh, Maureen kicked off a Castlegate program that was phenomenal, and, um, and that's also receiving an award this year, too. Um, the holiday party, as Gail mentioned, was at the Hibbard House, and uh, it also has received, uh, it, it has been on award, and actually one of our new board members is, is from the Hibbard House. Early this year in February, we had a, um, I always like to do a, a honoring architects, uh, and this year's architect was uh, Edwin Hill Clark, who designed the library many, many places in town, and as well as another Tuttle House we visited, uh, commonly known as the Hughes House. 
And then today, we're also visiting another Edwin Hill Clark House, and which hopefully you will go to our reception following our meeting today. It's Italianate, and it's a, such a different style of uh, Clark's. Uh, we had a stained glass program that actually drew a lot of people from other churches in, um, it, just people interested in stained glass. And um, then we have, if you've received um, your proxy and your letter, you have received a bookmark, sort of a bookmark, of all the programs we have going through December of this year. So just to let you know, our next event after, after today's is the uh, a, June wine, a June garden stroll. It's at the gardens at 900, which is really the Craig Bergman and Paul Klug's garden, and it's uh, not to be missed. So we have exciting programs, uh, some technical programs, um, strolls, and uh, we try to meet your needs. And if you have any ideas for programs, certainly we're all interested in hearing those. Uh, on a sad note, we, uh, this week we lost uh, one of our longtime members and volunteers. Um, if you've ever gone to uh, one of our receptions and asked for a glass of wine, uh, Cliff Dusky, who just passed away this week at, at the age of 54, would have, have handed you the glass of wine. He was an elegant man. Uh, anybody who works for Chanel uh, has to dress well, and he was the best dressed guy in the room. And he was also, in addition, just a fine gentleman and a, a good architectural student and lover of architecture. So we'll miss him. And um, um, anyway, and that ends my report, Madam President. The 2014 nominating committee consisted of Kristen Chung, Peter Coutant, Allison Dewar, Jerry Henry, Fred Moyer, Judy Bogus, and myself, and a member of large, Lynn Bertram. Uh, we met in accordance with the bylaws and respectfully proposed the following slates for your, for your approval and consideration. First, first, we'll deal with the officers. Uh, for President, Gail Hodges, Vice President of Development, Maureen Grinnell, two Vice Presidents of Programs, Allison Dewar and Arthur Miller, Secretary, Kristen Chun, and Treasurer, Fred Moyer. Do I hear a motion to, for acceptance of this slate of officers? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Would the officers please stand? So we can thank them for serving. <clears throat> and then secondly, we uh, elect the uh, propose this slate of directors for the class of 2017. Guy Berg, Judy Bogus, Ingrid Brzezinski, Arthur Miller, Elizabeth Moore, and Kent Wallison. Do I hear a motion for approval of this slate? A second? Did I hear a second? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. And would the class of 2017 stand? <clears throat> we thank all of these people for serving not only the foundation but the city of Lake Forest. Thank you. At this point, I would ask for a motion to adjourn our formal meeting, and um, we will follow with the presentation of the preservation awards. You all should have picked up at your entry table directions to the house for the reception after the uh, awards ceremony. May I have a motion for adjournment? Okay. So moved. Uh, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. At this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Steve Douglas, who is the chairman of our awards committee, and he will tell you some exciting news about preservation and stewardship. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Welcome to the 2014 Lake Forest Preservation Foundation Awards Program. 
This year we have awards in all five categories shown here. Let's begin with preservation. Preservation focuses on maintenance and repair of existing historic materials and retention of a property's form as it has evolved over time. This is the act or process of applying measures necessary to sustain the existing form, integrity, and materials of an historic property. At 1522 Estate Lane, Brian and Joan Maxwell have preserved the original dovecotes of David Adler's 1923 Albert Lasker Estate. The owners have also recently completed a complete renovation of the interior and an addition to the existing home. At 965 Castlegate Court, Cheryl and Bill Killam have preserved their 1930 Colonial Revival home, maintaining the home's original character and beauty outside while modernizing the interior to suit 21st century living. The original architect is unknown, but Stanley Anderson remodeled the home in 1941. The facades are a combination of brick and stone. Note how the brick coursing moves out of the plane of the wall, giving the masonry walls more depth and texture, similar to the adjacent stone portions of the facades. Next, we have a reconstruction award. Reconstruction recreates the form, features, and details of an historic structure or landscape through new construction. The First Presbyterian Church of Lake Forest owns the residence at 750 North Sheridan Road, adjacent to the church. Originally constructed in 1910, the home was designed by Richard E. Schmidt. Confronted with a dilapidated garage which posed safety hazards, the church hired Melikar Architects to rebuild the garage. Original windows were reused where possible, and the stucco walls with articulation above the garage doors, the wood shingle roof and eave construction to mimic thatch, and the design of the garage doors themselves are all derived directly from the original structure. Next, we have an infill award. Infill is new construction that demonstrates exemplary contextual compatibility in an already established neighborhood. At 276 Rose Terrace, Sandy and John Sacco wanted a house in the style of Harry Lindbergh. Speaking of Harry Lindbergh, note the pattern of the brickwork in the gable portion of this facade. We'll get back to this in a, in a moment. Here, Scott Stratif created a handsome brick design with a country house feel and French influences evident in the window proportions. The home is balanced and solid and serves to anchor the western end of Rose Terrace the way Stanley Anderson's design at 307 Rose Terrace does at the east end of the same block. Will the recipients of the Preservation, Reconstruction, and Infill Awards please step forward? First for the Preservation Awards for Estate Lane and Castlegate Court. Estate Lane. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very nice. Love Jennifer. your house. Now let's look at restoration. Restoration is undertaken to accurately depict the form, features, and character of a property as it appeared at a particular period of time in its history by means of the removal of features from other periods in its history and reconstruction of missing features from the restoration period. 815 Barbary Lane was built in 1927. We're not sure who the architect is, but it may have been Edwin Hill Clark. Owners Bridget and John Doheny retain John Krasnodebsky of Landmark Development to renovate the interior of the home and to restore elements of the exterior. In particular, the low masonry walls that you see flanking the entrance had deteriorated badly and were rebuilt, and all original shutters on the home were restored. 
But what really convinced the jurors that this home deserved a restoration award was what the owners did upon discovering an abandoned gas line leading to the existing electric light fixture above the front door. They installed a handsome gas fixture restoring this missing historic feature and taking the entr entrance of this home back to it the time it was originally built. Well done. 55 North Mayflower was designed by Harry Lindbergh in 1916 for Clyde Carr. This is the entry facade, which as you can see may have provided the precedent for the handsome masonry work we saw at Rose Terrace. Here's the west facade, and now the east facade facing the lake. A second floor balcony is hard to discern in this photo as it lies in shadow. Here it is. The balcony's main structural supports began showing signs of failure in 2010, and the balusters supporting the railing were rotting away. Owners Barbara and Barry Carroll decided to restore the balcony, paying attention to every detail of the original design. Cantilevered steel supports inside these boxed beams were restored or in some cases replaced, and a mill worker turned new cedar balusters on a lathe to match the originals perfectly. Mr. and Mrs. Carroll have had three daughters and a daughter-in-law throw wedding bouquets to the wedding guests from this balcony. And they assure us that the balcony will now accommodate another century of bouquet tossings. In late 2011, Jim Upsitnik of Deer Path Hill Estates noticed that the stone pillars at the subdivision's Melody Road entrance were in dire need of repair. After unsuccessfully seeking help from the state of Illinois, he undertook the repairs himself in 2012, hiring this gentleman to complete the work. He replicated the formula of the original mortar to tuck point the stonework and completely restored the slate roofs. Deer Path Estates was developed in 1926 by Henry Turnbull with 14 homes designed by Stanley Anderson, who also designed the Melody Road pillars and these main gates at Deer Path and King Muir Roads. In 2002, our foundation had raised funds to restore the gates, but the work was never completed. Ten years later, Jim Opsitnik's repair of the Melody Road pillars was the catalyst that led the City of Lake Forest and this foundation to partner in the gates restoration, each sharing half the cost. Naturally, Jim oversaw the entire effort and he even added these solar powered lights. About one year after that, in late 2013, our foundation supported by a neighborhood group, including the Killams, sponsored a Save the Castle Gate Gates fundraiser to raise money for similar restoration work to these gates at Waukegan and Castlegate Court. The restoration ha has just been completed, and of course, Jim Opsitnik once again coordinated the work. The city again funded half the cost, with the other half coming from neighborhood donations and the foundation's annual fund. What great examples of what a public-private partnership can accomplish. We are pleased to recognize both the City of Lake Forest and Jim Opsitnik with appreciation awards in recognition of these restorations. Will the recipients of restoration awards please step forward? Finally, we have four rehabilitation awards. Rehabilitation acknowledges the need to alter or add to an historic property to meet continuing or changing uses while retaining the property's historic character. Repair, alterations, and additions 
are made while preserving these, those portions or features of the property which convey its historical, cultural, or architectural values. At 60 Northwestern Avenue, William Weber has rehabilitated a gardener's cottage formerly associated with a large Green Bay Road estate. Extensive work has been accomplished, including a new roof and restoration of all the original shutters. Perhaps the most interesting to our jury was the fact that many layers of paint were painstakingly removed down to the original wood, allowing the original beaded profile of the wood clabberts to be revealed after being hidden for decades by many layers of paint. Here you can see the beaded edge on the, on the clabberts as well as the charming doorbell at the rear door. 340 North Awani Road was designed by Chatton and Hammond in 1912 for William Caldwell Nyblack. In 1928, Stanley Anderson added a two-story addition. Owners Sandra and Morando Berrettini have undertaken the rehabilitation of the entire structure. The interior of the home has been completely updated, improved, and restored. In addition, the exterior stucco was repaired, as was the slate roof. The landscaping was also restored. Interestingly, this was originally the front door facing Deer Path Road. The entrance was moved to the south when the property was subdivided years ago. Designed by Holabird and Roche, 9, 941 East Westminster was built in 1889 to 1892 and was a wedding gift for Henry Nelson Tuttle and Fanny Farwell Tuttle, daughter of John V. Farwell. Around 1920, a west wing was added probably designed by Edwin Hill Clark. Ingrid and Brian Brzezinski have owned the home since 1996 and remain its faithful and meticulous stewards. With their architect Stuart Cohen, restoring the house and the gardens to 21st century standards while maintaining its original character has been a real challenge, but also an enormous success. And finally, Designed by New York architect Philip Lippincott Goodwin, the noble Brandon Judah Estate Manor House was built between 1925 and 1928 as part of a 40-acre Green Bay Road estate. The meticulously restored manor house is an outstanding example of French Renaissance revival style. The gardens are a primary example of 17th century French landscape design. Current owners Francesca and Liam Connell with architect David Poulton, have renovated the kitchen area, installed interior humidifiers to protect all of the original wood paneling and floors, and have embarked on numerous exterior restoration projects, including repair of all the chimneys, repair of all the windows and shutters, restoration of courtyard elements, one of which is shown here, and including this fountain, and the installation of a new pergola in keeping with the original photographs. The masonry walls and limestone coping in the formal gardens and repair of landscaping is ongoing now. This is truly a labor of love and one which will likely continue for years to come given the scope of work involved. With all that they have already accomplished, we could easily recognize the Connells for preservation, restoration, and reconstruction in addition to the award for rehabilitation which they're receiving today. Will the recipients of rehabilitation awards please step forward? That concludes the awards. Thank you for coming, and most of all, thank you for your support of the foundation. <laughs>